Hey everyone, it's Norm from Tested. I'm here at E3 2016. Now I had to stop by the Razer booth because they announced a new VR headset this week. Now I'm here with Jeevan, who works on OS VR, and we met you at CES, but now here at E3 you have a new Hacker Velvet kit. It's the HDK2. So give us a little bit of the specifics, the specs of this headset. So the HDK2 is upgraded to feature dual display, running at 2160 by 1200 resolution, 90 hertz and 110 degrees field of view. Now those specs sound familiar to me because it seems like you're reaching parity, at least on the display side, with the Oculus Rift and the HTC Vive. Now there are two displays. Uh, are these OLED panels? And can you tell me more specifics about maybe the subpixel arrangement? They are OLED panels, RGB and they're low persistence as well. It actually features a silver screen, and um, it is combined with our optics, custom crafted optics, two pumped up, very vibrant, clear visuals. Right, so RGB sub-pixel arrangement. Yes. Is, wow, okay. The optics, you say you're allowing a 110 degree field of view. Now, optics have been a big concern for VR adopters, because everyone uses different style of optics. How many elements, some people use Fresnel lenses, hybrid lenses. What specific lens arrangement are you using in this version? We're not using Fresnel lenses, we are using custom crafted optics with a larger eye box um, for minimal distortion, lower color aberration, and yeah. And, can you tell me, for example, how many elements are in there? there? Are, there it's, it's a, it's a two-piece lens. Two-piece yep. lens. Um, now, the headset itself uh, looks like it's similar to the HDK1. You're still using, for positional tracking, an IR-based camera system. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Are there sensors on the front and the back of the headset? Yes, so there's sensors on the IR panel here, and there's sensors here as well. So you're allowing full so 360 full, full degree? So it's 360 degree motion tracking, yes. Positional tracking. Right, and you're also announcing the price point here is just around... Three ninety nine, ninety nine dollars 99 dollars It's $400, which is undercut to other competitors, but you don't have controllers on this. So what is the controller solution with OSVR? Because we are open source, we work with different controller partners. Um, I believe they tried the demo previously with Glove One. They're using motion tracking gloves that feature haptic feedback. Um, we are working with other partners like Nord Labs um, and Deep Motion to bring motion controllers to the ecosystem. Do you guys have preferred analog for, like, for example, the HTC Vive controllers? Because this is OSVR, presumably it will work with SteamVR and with this tracking system, but those games need some type of track controllers. Would Razer Hydra, for example, work with us? The Razer Hydra does work with SteamVR games. Um, the software platform itself does have motion controller support, and Glove One, as I mentioned, as well as Nord Labs, the Nord Lab Backspins, they do have um, motion tracking support. Once they're integrated into the ecosystem, they will be able to use the SteamVR games. Now, the first hacker development kit you guys released is really aimed toward developers because you really want to push that OSVR platform. Uh, with HK2, you're targeting consumers. What are you doing to make this more consumer friendly so it's more appealing to someone who wants to actually buy to play the games, the VR games out now? From the software perspective, we are coming out with installers, all in one installers that make the setup process a lot easier. It's roughly a two, three click step process right now. And on top of that, because of the upgraded display and additional comfort enhancements that we've made, it is a very viable consumer option. Now you said comfort enhancements. You're not using a rigid strap, it still is this kind of headband with a top strap. Um, how is this gonna be more comfortable? We've actually added thicker foam padding over here, as you can see. It does feature the nose blocker from the 1.4, and at the same time, we're gonna be coming up with uh, foam enhancements, so you can actually stick the foam at various places of the headset, depending on comfort on your cheekbones or forehead. Do you have any um, optical adjustments built into the headset? Yes, we do. We have focal adjusters over here that allow you to adjust the focus of each individual eye. If you wear glasses and your power is between 450 to minus 250 degrees, it does support it, which means that you can wear the headset without your glasses. Is that the same spec as it was in the first OS, uh, the first yes. HDK? Yes, it is. It's it's, it is the same. It's the same type of focal adjustments. Yep. Very cool. So you don't have swappable lenses, but you do have additional padding that you can put here yes. as well. And that is the, the sensor in the back. Yep. Um, with that $400, that includes the camera as well. Yes, right? it does. Our position checking camera. Now, how does it all connect to your computer? Uh, and how long is that cable? Because you have this one cord here, but you do have a breakout box. Yes. So this is about one meter in length, and we have a belt box over here that makes for easier cable management. The belt box, okay, right. You kind of clip it to your, to your pocket. And so I see a headphone jack here. This is the cable to the headset. USB 2.0 port. A USB 2.0 for game controllers? Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, it, it can be used for, for anything, but mainly game controllers. And then we have a custom, we have custom um, input here that runs a HDMI cable as well as a USB uh, cable all the way to the computer. 
And this is a power cable over here. Ah, so it's power that comes in here. It's these three cables. It goes to your computer. Yep. You said about a meter in length from your from the belt, from, from the belt yep. buckle to to the headset. Yep. How long is the rest of the cable? It's about two meters, two to three meters in length. A two to three is it? Two it's, or, uh, it's 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 about three meters. In length. About three yep. meters yep. in length. Three total meters in length. Very cool. And then what's the availability of the HTC2? It's going to be released in July this year in about three or four weeks' time. Awesome. What's cool. support like been for OSVR? What is What are their hopes and dreams for this platform, for this headset in the coming year? Because now we have actual competitors in the space. People are buying VR mm -hmm. games. Is Priority One getting people to be able to play those games on the headset? Yep, so definitely. I mean, one of the things that's cool about this headset, because it is open source, um, you can actually um, choose the type of controllers you want to use. You have controller options. At the same time, we do support different content platforms. We're trying to offer unrestricted access to content. So from the very start, we do have OSVR experiences. Um, we do have support for Steam VR, and we are working on support for emulators. If there are upcoming co VR content platforms, we are going to support that too. You know, some of your partners aren't just game developers, they're also engine builders and the, the actual video card makers too. Yes. Are you working with them to build in things like asynchronous time warp and other VR capabilities that their graphics cards have? Yes, so um, we do have a couple of partners and we work with different partners for different things. One of them is to improve the technology. The other would be, of course, adding content support and hardware support. So it is a 360 degree ecosystem and every day we're getting new people on board to make it better and to offer more to consumers. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for showing me the new Hacker Development Kit, Chief, and good luck with it. Thank you very much. Thanks. All right, so that was Razer's OSVR Hacker Development Kit to the second version. And I know the question you guys are asking is, how does the image quality compare? How does the display and the optics compare with the Oculus Rift and the HTC Vive? And they're, even though there's the same resolution and there's low persistence and there's 90 FPS, they're different, fundamentally different designs in all three of these headsets. On the Hacker Development Kit 2, they're using an OLED screen, but they're talking about it being an RGB sub-pixel arrangement. It's not the Samsung display that the Vive and the Rift use. Now, using their custom optics, which are not from lenses, so there were no god ray effects, even the low light demo I used, uh, I could read text. I could read text in the corner of the screen. I could make out stuff, and I can use the optical adjustments, so I don't need to wear my glasses. Actually, my glasses don't even fit in the foam. Uh, to see relatively clearly in the headset. But the image quality wasn't all there. It actually was more comparable to the PSVR's image quality. Um, there's not like a fuzziness or even like the linen effect. It's almost like a shimmering that I see through the lenses on the display. The, I would need to spend more time. Frankly, the amount of time we got to spend with this just isn't enough to give a nice qualitative and quantitative um, evaluation of the headset. We're going to get into the office. These things come out in July. And my biggest concern is compatibility with the games, because controllers. Now, you can plug a gamepad into this headset, an Xbox gamepad. You can play Steam VR games um, that are sit-down experiences or standing experiences with the gamepad. But I know everyone wants to play track controller games. And on the Vive, you have the Vive track controllers. And on the Oculus side, later this year, you'll have the Oculus Touch controllers. There is no formal solution for OSVR. There is the Razer Hydra, which is kind of expensive and it's not necessarily new technology, but there's no standardized option. So that may be the barrier that prevents most consumers who want that hand-tracked full VR experience from adopting this when it comes out. We'll see what partners they come up with. I did try their Glove One prototype, which had haptic feedback on the gloves. There are 10 vibration motors on the gloves, which give um, analog haptic feedback. It was a nice demo, but again, nothing. I want to see these in real games before we can give any type of recommendation. But we'll have more of these demos, more experiences on Tested.com. There's so much more E3 to cover. More demos head to. I'm Norm, and I'll see you next time.